Uh, so good evening uh, once again. Uh, so we last week we had a break and we I think uh, I was out of town. So also uh, we had a good time I uh, on uh, discussing about what we learned from the retreat. Uh, before that, we were uh, actually reading. Uh, we read from Book of Deuteronomy chapter twenty four, and uh, we'll today continue from Deuteronomy chapter twenty five. Uh, uh, we can. Um, uh, there are in 19 verses, uh, if someone can read from verse 1 to 10 and uh, other person can read from 11 to 19. When people have this feud, they are to take it to court and the judge will decide the case, acquitting the innocent and condemning the guilty. If the guilty person deserves to be beaten, the judge shall make them lie down and have them flogged in his presence with the number of lashes the crime deserved. But the judge must not impose more than 40 lashes. If the guilty part party is flogged, more than that, your fellow Israelites will be disgathered in your eyes. Do not muzzle an ox while it is trading out the grain. If brothers are living together and one of them dies without a son, his widow must not marry outside the family. A husband's brother shall take her and marry her and fulfill the duty of a brother-in-law to her. The first son she bears shall carry on the name of the dead brother so that his name will not be blotted out from Israel. However, if a man does not want to marry his brother's wife, she shall go to the elder at the town gate and say, My husband's brother refuses to carry on his brother's name in Israel. He will not fulfill the duty of a brother-in-law to me. Then the elders of his town shall summon him and talk to him. If he persists in saying, I do not want to marry her, his brother's widow shall go up to him in the presence of the elders, take up one of his sandals, spit in his face and say, this is what is done to the man who will not build up his brother's family line. That man's line shall be known in Israel as the family of the Unsandal. If two men are fighting and the wife of one of them comes to rescue her husband from his isolation, and she reaches out and sees him by his private parts, you shall cut off her hand, show her no pity. Uh, somebody can read the rest of the chapter from verse starting from verse 13. You must use Good. accurate skills when you weigh out merchandise and you must use full and honest measures. Yes, always use honest weights and measures so that you may enjoy a long life in the land of the Lord your God is giving you. All who cheat with this honest weight and measures are detestable to the Lord your God. Never forget what the Amalekites, Amalekites, <laughs> Amalekites <laughs> did to you as you came from Egypt. They attacked you when you were exhausted and weary, and they struck down those who were struggled behind. They held no fear of God. Therefore, when the Lord your God has given you rest from all your enemies in the land, he is giving you as a special possession. You must destroy the Amalekites and erase their memory from under heaven. Never forget this. Amen. Amen. Uh, so, um, again, uh, this chapter also goes over many different uh, set of laws, uh, uh, corresponding to different uh, situations. Uh, so first one uh, is uh, can be uh, uh, grouped from verses one to three, uh, where it has been uh, 
talking up about the judgment and uh, i think the uh, couple of points that are important here regarding the judgment here is that uh, the the person should be punished according to what he deserves uh, so uh, that's a, that is in the second part of verse 2 which says that uh, have him flogged in in his presence with number of lashes his crime deserves uh, the the another important point is like the punishment was served pretty quickly like within the time like when they were discussing the punishment they were uh, uh, punished pretty quickly and the third point was about uh, not overdoing the punishment in the sense of uh, even if the person would deserve a, a punishment like more than 40 lashes he should not be uh, uh, given that punishment because it degrades uh, the person's humanity. And uh, so there is a pretty, pretty like uh, uh, sort of a balance being trying to make between the justice and mercy and also uh, keeping in uh, keeping the even the, the person who has been offender, like keeping his dignity in mind. Uh, and actually, like, uh, as I was reading uh, in one of the places, it's very interesting that uh, like these set of laws are very much similar to a couple of them uh, can be grouped uh, or can be compared to some of the laws that we read earlier, like the one where you have like you, well, a person owns the field and he has the full right to actually get everything from that land. But even then, uh, the... Uh, Moses or the law is asking the person to actually leave some of the fruits behind so that it can be uh, used by the people who who doesn't deserve. So uh, you know, like people who have been poor or widow or people who have been just uh, traveling from one place to another. So uh, the point was that even even though like they're like the justice, is demanding a lot bigger measure, but there is like been a provision of mercy and provision, uh, like a provision of mercy and love that has been offered even to the offender. So that's been like sort of a theme, uh, uh, like that was very interesting in like giving, like even if you have full right, you are not exercising your full right of uh, justice and uh, providing or uh, keeping the dignity of the person. Uh, uh, Uncle, you want to add something to it? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm good. Thank yes. you. Yeah. Uh, anybody else wants to add on this particular section of judgment uh, of uh, uh, judging the people? Um, yeah, if not, we can move to the next section, which is uh, the verse four. Uh, which talks about do not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain. Uh, um, it's uh, it's me basically, uh, I think in the context behind this particular law is about like the ox is being used to grind or, or used to uh, run the mill. And as it goes around the mill, it, can, it grinds the wheat um uh, and wheat and the flour is made out of the wheat and in the meantime like there's a possibility that the ox can see some food and start eating it so <laughs> uh, so so there there can be a possibility that the people will put a muzzle or like something to uh, uh some kind of a net so that it can't open its mouth but here it clearly shows that do not not to do that which is pointing towards the uh pointing towards the showing the kindness to the even to the animals extending the kindness uh uh towards the uh to, like to like to be kind to the animals but uh interestingly this particular verse has been also used in the new testament uh if uh, if anybody remembers uh, or any particular verse that comes to their mind uh, with respect to this particular verse First Corinthians chapter nine verse nine and first Timothy chapter five verse eighteen. Yes. So 
so Paul actually extend this uh, particular verse uh, on do not muzzling an ox uh, while trading, while it is trading out the grain towards the people who are uh, people who have been pastoring the church or people who have been uh, working to uh, like building towards the church. I think we can probably read First uh, Corinthians chapter nine. Uh, first uh, Corinthians chapter nine uh, from I think. Uh, Maybe from verses seven to twelve, uh, 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 just to get the context. First Corinthians chapter nine, verses seven to twelve. Who sells the soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard and does not eat its grapes? Who tends a flock and does not bring the milk? Do I say this merely on human authority? Doesn't the law say the same thing? For it is written in the law of Moses, do not muzzle an ox while it is trading out the grain. Is it about oxen that God is concerned? Surely he says for us, doesn't he? Yes, this was written for us because wherever plows and treasures should be able to do so in the hope of sharing in the harvest. If we have unsworn spirit seed among you, it is too much if we reap a material harvest from you. If others have this right of support from you, shouldn't we have it all the more? But we do not use this right on the contrary. We put up the we put up with anything rather than hinder the gospel of Christ. I mean. So, uh, so clearly, like Paul has been uh, using this verse as an encouragement of, uh, or, or as a, giving a direction that do not exploit the people who are sharing the good word. Uh, just uh, like you have been blessed by them. And so do not just uh, be ignorant about their needs. Uh, but even in this particular passage, Paul is clearly pointing out that he is not there to like blackmail them and extract money out of them. Uh, but he is considering it uh, as his responsibility to share the good news. But uh, but uh, the point that uh, Paul was pointing out is like, you should be generous for the people who are, who have been like uh, spending their life or putting their, uh, uh, most of their time in spreading out in gospel. Uh, but again, I would say like, uh, I think, it again it i believe like it has to be done in a balance uh in the sense of like paul definitely was not blackmailing the church of corinthians about extracting money but he was encouraging them that he sh that they, they should not be they should not ignore the uh the people who have been sharing the good news uh any any comment on that uh section uh or that verse 4 um by anybody, anybody wants to add or uh, have comment? Yeah. So there are two places. He says that we have the right, but if uh, uh, was twelve, it says, but we did not, we did not use this mm -hmm. right. On the contrary, we put up with the anything rather than hinder the gospel of Christ. And then he gives another example and says, don't you know that those who serve in the temple get their food from the temple and that those who serve at the altar share in what is offered on the altar? In the same way, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel. Verse 15, but I have not used any of these rights, and I am not writing this in the hope that you will do such things for me, for I would rather die than allow anyone to deprive me of this boast. So what is very important to remember here is certainly 
those who are laboring in the world and they have a need, it is only proper that those he or she is laboring gets a blessing from their uh, material blessings. That's absolutely proper. But the key here is to remember Paul is saying, I rather boast in the Lord and I rather be not in any way. And that is why in the book of Acts chapter 20, he tells the Ephesian elders, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is not said to, uh, if you will, the believers, if it was said to the leaders or the elders. And, and so he says, that is what our Lord Jesus taught us, that we, it is better to. And the context is that, you know, he said, if I stayed in your house, did I take care of myself? I did not want to be a burden because I did not come for yours. I came for you. So the whole purpose here is to make it clear that while we who share the gospel have a right to meet the need, it is not to make you know, if somebody in, wants to get rich, they should find something else to do rather than using the gospel where the Bible says their belly is their gospel. Their belly is their God. So we need to be very careful. And also it is says it is more blessed to give than that I said. Otherwise, the other thing is that what you have done to the least, you have done it unto me. Those, uh, see, the teaching on these things is very simple if our heart is in the right place. If we are sharing the gospel to uh, become rich in this world, many have become rich. And sadly, in Africa, there are billionaire pastors uh, who uh, demand that they be they are sharing the gospel, therefore they should get the lion's share of people's wealth. That's not what Paul is writing. So this is very well balanced, and Paul is saying that he was able to work with his hands and therefore he was able to provide. He didn't have to use the right, but he was not criticizing Peter or other apostles who probably their their needs were met by the by the uh, people that they share the gospel with. Is there any questions about this? Is that clear? Is that clear, Victor? Uh, Victor, is that clear? Anyone else wants to add? It's clear. I, um, this verse in Leviticus, um, Leviticus 13, 19, verse 13. Mm -hmm. It's do not defraud or rob your neighbor. Do not hold back the wages of a hired worker overnight. So to me, in contrast with the, with the verse um, 4 in Deuteronomy, um, like, you know, if somebody's working for you, um, or if somebody, if you are like in a manager or manager position and have workers underneath you um, to, you know, instead of over overworking them, um, you make the labor somehow workable for them, the environment somehow um, conducive in a way that the person can work. Um, and if somebody's working, then, you know, you want to pay them for what it's worth. Um, so, I mean, that's just you know, what came came in my mind when I uh, thought about the, the, mm. the verse 4. Thank you, sister. Yeah, also, also a, a lot of preachers, uh, not only in Africa, but in America here, they have, uh, they, I think they have this position that uh, they're supposed to be rich from the gospel, that uh, they're destined to 
gain or get rich from the gospel. Not only them, but their families, their children. They send them to the best schools, private schools, have private jets and all this stuff. So um, so um, we, we keep praying for them, uh, especially in Africa, where the, con the countries, I should say Nigeria first, the white countries are very poor and people are scraping the last penny they have for the church, hoping that uh, God is going to bless them because they are giving their tithes. So, yeah, so th these are four preachers, and uh, we keep praying for them. And they, Amen. May God have grace on them. Also, I think Paul is trying to make a clear distinction, especially during that time, the heathens, the idol worshippers, they were putting a heavy load on the people. And he wanted to make clear that is not the gospel. The gospel is not to get, but it is to give in every way. And when we give, we get it because God gives more than we ask or we think. God is our provider. Not to look to people, but look unto Jesus. Uh, Amen. Amen. I think uh, as un uh, Uncle was talking about, like, like the possibility that Peter was, uh, like, some of the other apostles may have been, uh, uh, like, have been getting maybe. But I was just reminded of the fact that there were many people, like. Especially, I think in book uh, in book of Luke, it talks about like there were many women who supported Jesus' ministry. Yeah. So uh, I think, but even then, like Jesus was not super rich. <laughs> it was like uh, about taking care of maybe like basic needs or something. But uh, uh, so, but I, I think the underline is as we all discuss is about like the right balance between uh, not to take advantage of those who are working hard and also like. On the other side, from the same uh, principle that uh, that the people who are being blessed by somebody that they should not be looting the uh, uh, the people who have been giving in terms of tithe. Uh, it, I think it's same. Uh, I think I, I, as I was reading, it is the same kind of a logic that was in Deuteronomy chapter twenty three, verse twenty four, which talks about like. You can enter your neighbor's vineyard, get something, get some fruit, but don't go go there and start collecting their fruits. So it's a, it's actually like a pretty well balanced. Uh, and uh, as Uncle pointed out, it's the uh, like it's about like the it where your heart lies in uh, that matters in in this kind of situation. Yeah. One so other, uh, yeah. Yeah. Go, go. Finish. Yeah, go, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what I was going to say is that, you know, this building of cathedrals and uh, building of church buildings, all those things happened at least three, four hundred years. It all happened with Constantinople. Constantinople, the emperor, mm -hmm. because they were big Greek temples for their goddess. And once he made Christianity the religion of the empire, then he started building these huge cathedrals and all that so that they would outshine the pagan cathedrals. Mm -hmm. And the history of those cathedrals, the building is very sad because it was like forced slavery. People were not, like Gustavo was talking about paying fair wages. They were not paid fair. You know, look at those European cathedrals. They were built at a time there were hardly any missionary. So many, many people have died in the process of building those things. So two things they have done. Build the palace for the king. Build the cathedral for the pope or the bishop. That's what you see. You go to Europe, in, in the, you, what you see is huge edifices, huge mansions. One they call it palace, the other one they call it cathedral. And, uh, you know, they, they were built by forced labor. 
So it's sad. It has nothing to do with the Bible. It has to do with the fallen state of the church. Because in the if you read the book of Acts, they went from house to house. And that is why Amish, you know, the people who have uh, come from Germany and live in America, they still have no church building. They go from house to house to have their meetings. Because that is the original biblical pattern. So anything that we have, it should be simple enough where we can conveniently gather together and uh, uh, fellowship together. It is not to build monuments. Our Lord does not need a monument. You know, we are his monument, not buildings. So may God help us to have clear clarity about these things. Amen. Amen. Um, my take for this uh, uh, chapter 25, it deals with various laws and regulations intended to promote justice, fairness, and human treatment within the Israelite community. Uh, when I sit to reflect on this, I come to the conclusion that our greatest enemy is not sin or Satan or the devil. It is ignorance. What did Christ say? Said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. If we read Hosea 4, verse 6. It says, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you as my friends. You see, people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That knowledge is the word. So I think if we are, if we are ignorant, Satan will take advantage of us. Let us not be, you know, like the Pharisees or the scribes who actually thought that they were doing all what they did was for God, but actually they were doing wrong. Let us study the word because if we know the truth, nobody can take away that from us or the devil. If we know the truth, how can false prophet take advantage of us? The less ignorance we have, the less distraction we can experience. Knowledge means light. So I encourage all of us to study the word so that no one can take advantage over us. Amen. Amen. So uh, we can actually quickly look into the next section of uh, uh, the portion of law that has been talked about. Uh, it's about uh, uh, the widow of the brother, uh, or like if a uh, if the if the older brother dies and he leaves uh, he leaves his widow without a, and without a son, then one of his uh, brother should go ahead and marry marry her so that the name of the husband remains or name of that family uh, remains and this was uh, uh, i think the one of the terms maybe it's called it's called a leveret marriage uh, that is the term that has been used it has actually nothing to do with the the tribe of levi but i think it's some it's a latin word which comes actually marrying your brother if I'm, uh, if I remember it right, but it is this this kind of custom is called a leveret marriage. Uh, so, uh, so here the main principle is that to preserve the family name and also to preserve the uh, or like to or to protect the widow. So and uh, and there is also like mentioned the consequence of uh, uh, or the or sort of like a consequence that a woman can. Uh, use her right to call uh, the uh, call the gathering and where he can act where she can actually uh, call his brother-in-law in the presence of the whole uh, 
uh, group and like uh, and take the sandal off her leg, sandal off his leg, and uh, like sort of condemn him, condemn the brother. So that is the that is that is what like the general uh, law that has been given, uh, and it is interesting that uh, if if somebody remembers like where the where like this kind of marriage was talked about uh, in Old Testament, if somebody remembers any uh, incident or any any story about uh, people uh, or the group of or group of people following this law. So, so the one place where it, yeah, yeah, it is, I, I think it is in Ruth's book. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, one, one is Ruth, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one is actually Ruth, and this, the, it was also mentioned in Genesis. Uh, it is uh, the daughter-in-law of J Judah, who, uh, like, where exactly this was, uh, this law was followed uh, to the bit, like, where, uh, uh, the daughter in, daughter in law's name was Tamar. She married the first son uh, of Judah, and he died without having son. He married the second son. Mm -hmm. He also died, and he went on to ask for the, the third son. And there was a lot of this confusion, and Judah didn't want, like he was afraid that all of his sons would die. So this particular custom was followed in the olden times. And uh, as uh, Johnson Uncle also mentioned that this is the same custom that was, uh, uh, that is what like uh, Naomi encouraged Ruth to uh, follow. And it and that is what I think, uh, I think that makes more sense now after reading this particular portion than when Boaz went to the elders and uh, he asked that can he marry Ruth. Uh, before that, he was uh, actually he uh, like he told Ruth that there is one other person who is uh, who is I think in the I think the order that he he should be the one who should marry Ruth, and that particular person takes off his sandal and give it to Boaz, or like he leaves the sandal and the concept of like where the sandal is, where there is your authority. I think that is what like probably also coming from this word that even here like the woman can take the sandal of the brother and uh, in 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 case of the story of Ruth that person uh, leaves the uh, the sandal and Boaz is able to um, marry Ruth and we all know the story of like how Ruth became the uh, uh, one of the four or like uh, or like she is in the genealogy of Jesus so this was the custom that was there. And this is also like one of the loopholes that uh, uh, Sadducees used in terms of to trick Jesus, where they came up with the idea of like questioning whether resurrection is possible. They took the same part of the law talking about, okay, if the first, uh, like a, if a woman marries the first son and he dies without son and it goes away, like goes to like seven and uh, seven of his brothers and all of them died. Nobody had son and the woman died and they were trying to trick Jesus in talking about, okay, now what will happen? The fact that like the woman has been married to seven uh, uh, men. So whose wife it would be. So this means that the resurrection is not possible, but Jesus clarifies the fact that, uh, that this is not how you look at the resurrection is, but the, Important point was like this particular portion of the verse was the one like that was the basis for that question that was in 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 the Gospels. Uh, I think we just ran out of time. <laughs> uh, probably we, we can discuss it a little bit more next time. But uh, if Uncle, you want to add something quickly or. Uh, I think it's good that we can uh, revisit a little bit next week. Okay. But uh, it's good. Praise God. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you that we can come and learn and especially right from the Old Testament. Lord, it is your good pleasure to give us the kingdom and to bear one another's burden. 
and to lay down our life for one another. Not to demand, but to give as you have given, O Lord. In that, there is great blessing and you are Jehovah Rapha. You are our provider. You are Jehovah Jireh. You provide all that we need for life and godliness. Those who put their trust in the Lord will never be put to shame. Help us, O Lord, to bless one another, not only with our spiritual gifts, but with our material blessings, that none among us will be without food, clothing, or shelter. Help us to care for one another as brothers and sisters. Thank you for teaching us tonight. Thank you for Ashish and all those who have come to listen to your word. Make us obedient. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet abiding fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of us till our Lord Jesus returns in his glory. Amen. 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 I will Saturday morning and be with you all, if it is God's will, Sunday. And please also remember my son, Lord Liju, who is traveling as we speak to China for a conference. God bless you. Bye-bye. Okay.